What's up everyone, if you have an Android head unit in your car and you're running Android 9, 8, 6, and you want to upgrade to Android 10, you probably contacted your manufacturer like I did. As you can see here, I contacted Avin and they said I cannot update from 9 to 10. Now, hardware wise, the new units are basically the same as the old units, it's just the software. So today, I'm going to show you how you can update your Android head unit to Android 10. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, so what we're gonna do is go to this this page right here, and this is the URL I'll post. And basically, these are your MCU versions, and this is the requirements here. So this is the main requirements right here. So if I have a PX5, PX6, or PX30, and if you have Android 10, 9, 8, or even 6, you can do this. Now your MCU version needs to be here, and we'll show you how to look at that in a second here. So what we're gonna do, is check down here it says if you have android 10 installed we don't have android 10 installed we have android 9 8 6 installed so this requires us to do mod installer pro now mod installer pro is this program right here and i'll put a link to this as well in the description and basically what this does is it allows you to flash your recovery to the new android 10 and allows you to basically install android 10 now here you can do uMoney or PayPal, I did PayPal, you just select your processor type, mine's a PX6, then you put your serial number here, and then you do purchase and pay now and he'll give you the thing. And here are some instructions on how to do this, so I'll let you guys do that. Now once you have this, you will have a file here, oneinstallerpro.apk. We're going to install this on our head unit, and, but before we do that, we also need to download the firmware. So if you go down here, you can see PX5, PX6, PX30. I have a PX6, so I just click this. This is the file here. I'm just going to click download. I already got it, so that's that. Next, we need the MCU. So as you can see, this is the MCU version. So here, as you can see, we have an MCU. Now, mine is GS. And basically, I'm going to download the latest version, which is from here, it looks like 373. So we'll download this one. And we're just gonna click this. I have it open right here. So right here, you just load a download button. It's the smallest button in the, in the universe. But yes, so we have that. And we have our mods. And just to show you guys, uh, this is the Avon website. So I have a PX6 right here, right? And as you can see, it is running Android 10 here. This is the UI choices. Now, you can actually even download the firmware if you wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go ahead and put this mod installer EPK on our USB. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and format this USB that I just plugged in. And once it's formatted, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the files to this USB. So as you can see, it's empty. So I'll go ahead and transfer the 5.0 mod firmware first. And then once this update.zip file is on there, we're gonna go ahead and put the mod installer APK on the USB as well. Now, once both of these are on the USB, we're gonna go ahead and eject it. And then we're gonna head over to the car and plug it in. Well, actually, I'll show you how to check your firmware first. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and go into the settings. And once you're in the settings, you're gonna click system. And we're gonna click about machine. And now here we have our screen resolution which is perfectly fine android version is 9 then uh, of course here we have our mtce gsv 3.40 so we're going to update this that's november 2019 and then of course um, we have our cpu here our serial number here so my cpu is a px6 i don't think it says it anywhere here no it doesn't yeah, so this is the settings. So now what we need to do is factory reset this. All right, so this is my um, SD card. I'm gonna eject it. And then now that it's ejected, I'm just gonna go ahead and open this little port right here. And we're gonna take out the SD card. Gotta be gentle not to break it. And then here's my SD card. So you don't want any SD cards in there. So now we need to factory reset the head unit. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and format the head unit. We're going to click system. Then there's reset options. And then we're going to do erase all data factory reset, reset machine, erase everything. And then now it's going to do a factory reset. So we're going to let it factory reset. 
All right, so now we are factory set it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in my, I'm using an SD card because my USB wasn't being recognized. But basically, um, it's probably gonna ask me to update because the update file's on here. Gotta be careful not to click yes. Let's see, it's gonna click this. All right, so here we have mod installer. See, this came up, just click cancel. Don't update it like that. Here's mod installer. And we're just going to go ahead and install this app first. And then, of course, it says, click install, turn on play. I'm going to click decline, just so it doesn't flag anything. And we're going to click open. And then here we go. So you can install different versions of Android, depending on your device. So we're going to install um, Android 10. And then we're going to click install. Everything is going to be erased. We're going to click OK. So it looks like it's going to restart. So before we update anything, I'm just going to go ahead and start the engine real quick. Just so the battery doesn't uh, die. Alright, so we're going to go into Apply Update from SD or USB. And we're going to hold this button down. And it asks you which one. We're gonna do SD card, so I'll hold it down, and there you go. It's it found the update, and hopefully it installs. So let's let this do its thing and come back when it's done. You can see it says installing update now. This is pretty interesting. It says it's patching the product image, the vendor image, system image, and stuff, and it looks like it has the specific head unit I'm using. So. If I'm understanding standing this correctly, this would update the exact same way as if it was an Avon unit. So it should have all like the Avon stuff in it. We'll see how it is when it's actually done, but this is pretty cool. All right, so as you can see, it completed. So now we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna disconnect this real quick. I'm gonna click reboot system now. Let's see if it worked. Okay, that's good. It shows the uh, HAL 9000 Android 10. Looks like it kept the logo as well, which is good. Get out the frame so it focuses. All right, looks like we are up to date. That's interesting. This is the current system that it installed. I'm just gonna go into settings real quick. And we're gonna go into about there we go so it has the 5.0 android 10 and for some reason it's powering off i don't know why i did that I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the car for now I'll click this again and hopefully this time it doesn't turn off or something so now i just need to update the mcu version i said to go into recovery all right we're gonna enter recovery mode you just hold this power button down and then it asks you what you want to do I click recovery mode so we can try and update the MCU firmware. So we're going to go ahead and go to MCU from SD card. And then I'm going to use my SD card. And there we go. Let's see what it says. Okay, I guess it's updating the MCU, it looks like. At least that's why I hope everything's flashing here. Okay, it looks like it updated and restarted the head unit okay so now if we go to settings go all the way down to about machine go to the mcu there we go so we're now on 373 so we're basically fully up to date now there is one more thing we can do and i'm going to show you all that before we do anything else i want to update to the latest version so if we go to mod settings down here there is an option called system update and of course it shows it as up to date oh here we go access code so if you buy the access code like i did i'm gonna enter it real quick and then we'll see what happens and we'll see if we can update all right so i entered in my code and it restarted oh and it says i found an update package so right, right when i restarted it, i connected to the wi-fi and this came up so i'm gonna click yes it's interesting that it's only 12 megabytes let's see what happens all right so as you can see we've updated this is my there we go all right so 
Now let's go to settings just to see what the software was. All right, so 501. I believe the latest is 502, so I don't know why updated to. Oh, never mind. There we go. Another update. All right, so I'm going to update to 502, and then, yeah, we should be up to date. All right, so I'm just going to click settings one more time just to see if on the latest version, which is 502, and we are. So now I just need to figure out how to restore my CarPlay because right now it has this Z-Link app. And as you can see, hardware error and all this stuff is coming up because we need autoplay. So I'm going to look for autoplay and hopefully, oh, it looks like I found like another one. I'm going to look for autoplay and then we'll update again. All right, so now what we're going to do is I went ahead and downloaded the APK for the CarPlay. And we're going to go ahead and see, I'm going to click notes of the OT update for now. Okay, this is the one that it should be working. Let's see if it works. All right. Okay, I'm just going to click done for now and just see where it's at. There it is. So let's see if this works. I'm going to click allow. Interesting. Maybe I should not allow any of those. Click always allow, always allow. This is interesting, it says new version available. I just realized you guys probably can't even see anything I'm doing. Let me lower the brightness on this. There we go. Oops. All right. So it says new version. Um, let's see if it updates this. Ah, of course, I gotta change my settings from this source install all right so let's see allow while using this app okay so it says please connect phone so I'm gonna go ahead and connect my phone real quick and see if this works after all right so as you can see we've gone ahead and got CarPlay working so that pretty much is everything. Um, I'm not sure about this launcher. I kind of like the way this part looks, but we'll see. Maybe I'll um, change the launcher if I do. I'll either add it to the video, and if I don't, I'll probably not add it to the video. But yeah, everything's working now. I guess the biggest thing is to restart this and see if CarPlay automatically turns on. I'm just going to play with this more, but hopefully that helped you. All right, so next, let's deal with the launcher. Now, this launcher is pretty cool, but if for some reason you don't like it or you want to use the original one that you had, you go to the APK installer, click install, we're going to click internet, and basically if you go to that website that has the factory firmware, there's a lot of uh, PNG files per folder that shows you how the launcher looks like. And from what I saw, my launcher should be launcher 3HCT, I think 7. So I'm just going to install Launcher 3.7. I'm just going to install this, and then we'll see how it looks once it's installed. All right, so I downloaded it, so now I just click it, and basically we're going to install Launcher 3 and see how it looks. All right, so here is Launcher 3. This is, I believe, the default launcher for the Avon Avent 4 with Android 10. Now, I kind of like the previous launcher better but obviously you can go through the list and find more so i'm just going to do that and see if i find one that i like better all right so i went ahead and um so just to show you guys you can actually click the png first download the png and look at how they all look and then you can decide which one you want to do i installed 3js 16.3 that apk which looks like this and i know the wife will like this look better as well Hopefully I can change these bottom icons. But yeah, this is the launcher I'm going to use. All right, so next I want to go ahead and show us the mod settings. So this is basically all the extra stuff that you get with this firmware. First one being is the screensaver. So you can set a screensaver. You can make a blacklist. Um, and the few other options here, I'm probably not going to really use that. Application settings. So as you can see here, I'm just going to go through the menus to show you all exactly what is you know options that are available music it's mostly the same stuff here um third player you know show pop-up messages from third-party media players 
and then I think there was a few more like cameras, you know, front, you, you can mirror the front view camera, dynamic parking lines, and a few other things like that. Next, we have application management. And basically here, you can choose which applications you want to start when the device is booted. So I have the iBus and autoplay because I want those to be enabled. And then here, there's a few activities you can do, delays, go to home screen after auto start and then list of applications that do not close when you sleep um, media players delay so there's a lot of options here basically um, you can change the mode button here applications that start instead of stock so here you can change the applications that are default and then for hardware settings so there's a GPS USB OTG, um, screen rotation if supported, and then this is what I like. So adjust the volume depending on your speed. So you can basically change the volume, kind of like how the newer BMWs, for, at least for my cars. The newer ones, they automatically do this. So you can change the step. Here I have one step, and I have 40 miles per hour, 70 and 90. I should probably change that to like 20, 40, 60 instead. And then you can choose to show volume control or not. So I have mine turned off, so it doesn't really show you like, oh, it's changing, it just does in the background. And then we have volume control, so style. Now the default is this, and I'll show you all how that looks like. That's the default. Now there's also an AV style. This is kind of like what I like. So if you do this, you can see that it's kind of like an AV. You can change the position, some sensor and all that. There's delays. And then key codes, um, I honestly don't know what this is, so I'll play with that later. Status bar, so here you can change stuff on the status bar, you can change like what you want to see there, which is really nice actually. And then mod setting management, you can export, import, and reset your settings, so I should probably actually export mine after I'm done with this. And then system update is for the OTA updates, which again you do have to pay for. And then the access code you enter here, I already entered mine. And then here is the site for the developer. So those are the mod settings. Now, overall, it's pretty smooth. Um, I'm kind of glad I updated. And, you know, again, you don't need to even buy the OT updates. The mod firmware base 5.0 is free. Just mod installer costs money. You can even install the factory firmware and the repository firmware. So there's that. Anyways. I have a couple more things I'm installing in this car. One being the front cam slash DVR and the other one being tire pressure monitor system. So I actually just received those yesterday. So be sure to subscribe and I'll show you all those and I'll see you on the next one.